Are you leading a double life? If so, you need deliverance. In this episode of Overcoming the Dragon, we're going to be looking at individuals in the scripture that led double lives and needed deliverance and didn't know it. And for them, it was too late. But it's not too late for you. Stay tuned. If you have found Overcoming the Dragon Ministry to be a source of strength and help to your spiritual walk in these trying times, why not show your support today? Just $1 a month from each of our listeners will help with operating costs and keep us on the air. The Prince of Darkness is bringing his full wrath in these last days, and Overcoming the Dragon Ministry stands ready to defend the gospel and overcome his lies with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Brother Skinner relentlessly marches forward through enemy lines, tearing down Satan's strongholds and setting the captives free. Your investment in this ministry, large or small, will be rewarded in this life and the life to come. God bless you. Are you living a double life? Are you living a secret life? Living out a secret, leading a secret that nobody else, you think nobody else knows about. Is there something you're doing that you think you're getting away with? Well, the scripture tells us, be sure your sin will find you out. And that's actually a good thing. Uh, because there's hope. But that's also a shameful thing if your sin finds you out. Take David, King David, for example. How embarrassing it must have been when his sin found him out. Amen? But two other individuals I'd like us to look at in the scripture and really three because there was two individuals in one of these examples but there is uh, one individual I think that you're going to find very interesting and hopefully there'll be conviction that you'll stop leading a double life and you'll realize you need help you'll realize you need deliverance. Because if it can happen to him, it can happen to you. If it can happen to them, it can happen to you. Luke chapter 22, verse 3. Luke chapter 22, verse 3. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot being of the number of the twelve. He was one of the twelve. John chapter 13, verse 27. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus said unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Judas Iscariot was living or leading a double life. He was doing something that he thought nobody knew about. And I will guarantee you Jesus Christ knew what Judas was doing all along. Just like the Lord knows what we are doing, folks. Now, if you have a problem and you can't get the the victory over it and you're having a struggle with it, that's not the same thing as somebody that thinks they're getting away with something. Someone that's being sneaky. 
someone that's doing something behind the scenes, something that's, that somebody's doing, well, I'm not going to get caught. You see the difference? But even after we're born again, there are certain vices, certain weaknesses that we may still have, traces of sin that may still be in our flesh that where we haven't fully been delivered. And God will sometimes leave that for us to make a choice, even after being saved, make a choice. Do we really want to serve Him? And we've got to take up our cross. We've got to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow Jesus. Because what would it be like if you get saved and God completely delivered you of every single thing? Where's the test in that? No. God sometimes leaves things even after we're saved. You know, being saved does not altogether mean you're totally delivered. A lot of us get saved and we still have problems. And God knows there's still problems there. Sometimes God will leave it to humble us. Sometimes we don't realize that pride is a sin. Well, how come God didn't deliver me of pride? <laughs> because that's part of the test. You've got to deny yourself. Take up your cross. You've got to choose the cross. You've got to choose humility. See, you've got to choose the truth. So here we see an individual that was one of the 12, Judas Iscariot. I know I've heard many people say, well, Judas didn't have a choice. He was the son of perdition and there was no choice. Judas was destined to hell. He was destined to, uh, to betray Jesus Christ. But Judas didn't have a choice. Well, because of the foreknowledge of God, God knew that Judas was going to make this choice, but that doesn't mean God made this choice for Judas. Don't get it twisted, people. You know, Satan tries to make a lot of us think, well, God knew you were going to do that. God knows you have a problem in that area, so I can keep on doing it. We've all been there to some degree and tried to play that. But there comes a time when God says, you know better. Quit it. Amen? And some of us, God has to tell us to quit it. But thank God he does. But with Judas Iscariot, he was doing this ongoing. We don't know how this long this went on where he was continually stealing uh, from the treasury. And we know that this shows up way before he betrays Jesus, right? We see the place in the scripture where they, uh, the woman was taking the, uh, the, taking the um, alabaster box, and which was a very precious ointment, pouring it on Jesus. And Judas speaks up and he says, why are you wasting that? Huh? Judas, do you know who he is? But Judas couldn't cover it up. Are you listening? Why did Judas place more value upon that alabaster ointment than he did upon the Son of the living God? And let me ask you a question, dear friends. Why do we place more value on anything? More value than Jesus? If you're placing value on anything in your life more than Jesus, you may have a Judas Iscariot problem. You may be leading a double life. And chances are, you are leading a double life. If you put anything in your life higher than the Lord, anything, doesn't matter what it is, thou shalt have no other gods before me, then you're involved in idolatry. And idolatry is sin. 
Now, I'd like us to look at two other individuals in the scripture because most of us understand about Judas Iscariot. We pretty much know his lot and his, uh, you know, his lot in life where he ended up going. We we pretty much understand about uh, about uh, Judas Iscariot. But now let's look at two other individuals in Acts chapter five, verse three. Please listen, folks, because every single one of us are subject to like passions. There's not one of us that's not in some way uh, maybe putting something before God. And I'm going to tell you, it's very dangerous. And I believe there's time to find help before it's too late. For Judas Iscariot, the scripture says Satan entered into him. You may be living a double life, saying you're a Christian, saying Christian things, doing religious things before people, but you may be doing something in secret, and you may think, nobody knows. Well, the Lord knows, Jesus knows, but more than that, listen people, the devil knows. And you know he's plotting, he's scheming, waiting for a moment to do what? To enter you. Satan entered. Satan entered into Judas. Are you listening? Satan entered into Judas. The scripture says when Judas realized what he had done, he threw the money down. It didn't mean anything to him anymore. Begin to scream the top of his lungs, I've betrayed the innocent blood. But see, Judas turned to the quote-unquote Catholic priests, if you will. They weren't the Catholic priests back then, but you know what I mean. He turned to man for help. And they said, what's that to us? Get out of here. You made a deal. We gave you your money. Keep your money. Judas threw the money on the ground and ran out of there and committed suicide. Do you think you can afford to live a double life? Judas took his own life people because of the torment when Satan entered into him. When Satan enters, there will be torment. There will be torment. And until you are delivered, you will continually be tormented by Satan. Fear has torment. Satan brings fear. Satan tries to bring a fear into you to cause you to become totally uh, just where you can't do anything for Jesus. He doesn't want, he wants you to be totally paralyzed in serving God. He doesn't want you to be able to serve Jesus. And he will paralyze you. And even physically, if, if, if God allows it. I'm going to tell you people, it's, it's a dangerous thing to play with sin, to play with Satan. And uh, these two individuals in Acts chapter 5 are a warning to you and I. Acts chapter 5 verse 1, it says, But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price. Not the full price. They kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. They wanted the honor of giving the whole thing, but they didn't want to give it all. 
They wanted everybody to think they gave it all. But Peter, remember, he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Peter is a man, but he's also filled with the Holy Ghost. And this is not Peter speaking. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? to keep back part of the price of the land. Do you think Peter knew that by himself? No. God knew. Amen. And the Holy Ghost in Peter spoke through Peter. While it remained, was it not in thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing to lie Thou in thine heart, and thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Listen to this. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down, gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. Satan filled Ananias's heart. The scripture says, give no place to the devil. The word place means entrance. Judas Iscariot, the scripture says, Satan entered. Give no entrance to the devil. Are you listening? It's a dangerous thing, people, to think that you're doing something in secret or even with your wife, with a family member. I'm not going to go into any detail here. If you're doing something wrong and sin hasn't found you out yet, that's the mercy of God that sin will find you out. That's the sh- be, to be embarrassed and ashamed before others. Look at Jimmy Swaggart, right? But there's another way than even that, and that is Satan entering. I've been trying to warn you about Jimmy Swaggart. His ministry now, what he offers is more dangerous in a lot of ways, more dangerous than Benny Hinn. Why is that? Because the people that are listening to Jimmy Swaggart, they think he's a real believer. He has a form of godliness. Because he didn't truly repent, because he didn't truly turn from the lust, Jimmy Swaggart today is filled with Satan. Are you listening? Tormented. And weeping all the time. You ever seen anybody weep so much? Always weeping. Now, this is not Jeremiah. Jeremiah didn't weep before the people to put on a show or to, you know. No, Jeremiah was weeping in secret before God for the slain of the children of Israel. But when you see someone like Jimmy Swaggart that weeping before the people all the time, this is a man that's so guilt-ridden, so full of guilt. This is a man that's so bound up that he used to hang on his gate of his mansion or his house and just hang on the gate and cry out to God for deliverance. Jimmy Swaggart needs deliverance, folks, but he's not the only one. Amen. If we are leading a double life, we need deliverance, people. If we're doing something in secret, doing something that we think nobody knows about, got by with that one. No, God sees it. God knows about it. That's why I say there's still hope. There's still hope. Now, I know there are people that are listening to this broadcast that are leading double lives. I know one individual in particular. And not saying any names, but one in particular that is 
letting making people think that they are doing right, that they are a Christian, and that they are promoting, uh, trying to expose sin and expose evil things, but yet they are doing something in secret that uh, if others knew about would not only be shameful, but uh, might even be destructive to them. But thank God. Thank God that nobody knows about it. At least maybe they don't. And you can get right. You can stop the charade. You can stop living this double-mindedness, this double life, leading this double life. We're talking, people, gross sin here. We're talking about uh, very, very bad. And I would like to see this individual, and I don't know this person individually, and I'm that's as far as I'm going, uh, but I just want you to know there's hope. There's hope. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is faithful. With the temptation, we'll make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, I think that there are those that listen to this broadcast that you were at one time maybe raised in the gospel. You were saved at one time. But um, you've gotten away from the Lord and you're living a double life. You're leading a double life and you're doing something in one part of your life you're doing something that's totally, completely against the righteousness of God. And then before people you're acting as though you're a believer. I don't know you personally, okay? But I saw enough, I saw enough to know that this is, without question, demon possession demon possessed and it's possible that this individual is actually being used by Satan I don't know I don't know the Bible says to know those among you and so like I said I don't go any further but you got to remember Ananias and Sapphira They were a believer in Christ. They were playing that role. And so wasn't Judas, one of the twelve. It's interesting how the ones closest to us and the ones that are supposed to be closest to Jesus are the ones that become the most dangerous. Satan is trying to infiltrate the body of Christ. How many know there are those that are bent on working with Satan to destroy believers. Are you listening? What happens is they will see a certain individual weak or a person that's listening to this broadcast and maybe see their comments and they'll start befriending them. And Before you know it, they'll convert them over to witchcraft, convert them over to the occult. You know, some of us on here we call they call them trolls, people that just troll. But they're more dangerous than just trolls. They're plotting, they're scheming, they're looking for somebody that they can convert over to witchcraft, someone that they can convert over to the occult. And I'm telling you, there are people watching this program that are listening to this broadcast that are involved in the Illuminati. They were involved in the Masons. And they watch. And they plot.
And I want to help them too, not just the ones that they that listen to this broadcast that you know I consider my I'm responsible for to some degree. But I want to help them too. If you are living a double life, you need deliverance. Are you listening? I just gave you two examples in the scripture. There's many more. Let's close out in prayer. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, your holy son, we ask God that you will bring to light not in the open, not to expose before people, but this individual in particular, but others that maybe listen to this broadcast that are trying to lead a double life. Lord, before their sin finds them out, they have an opportunity to come to the light for their deeds to be reproved. We know, Lord, that the great mercy of God is the next step is your sin will find you out. But, Lord, then there's the individual that never gets help, where Satan enters. And they are given over, and then they are given up unto uncleanness. Lord, you know the individual that I'm speaking of, You know, Lord, that they need deliverance. God, you are faithful. I, Lord, by your grace, we will serve you in this hour and do your will. But we know that there are those among us, God, that are weak. And we need to bear the burdens of those that are weak. Pray, God, that you will bring deliverance to these individuals so that Satan can't enter them. And Lord, if Satan's already entered the individual or even individuals, We pray, God, that you will bring deliverance to the captive. Hallelujah. Father, you're able to deliver them. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Closing. Please listen to this message. God bless you. If you have found Overcoming the Dragon Ministry to be a source of strength and help to your spiritual walk in these trying times, why not show your support today? Just $1 a month from each of our listeners will help with operating costs and keep us on the air. The Prince of Darkness is bringing his full wrath in these last days, and Overcoming the Dragon Ministry stands ready to defend the gospel and overcome his lies with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Brother Skinner relentlessly marches forward through enemy lines, tearing down Satan's strongholds and setting the captives free. Your investment in this ministry, large or small, will be rewarded in this life and the life to come. God bless you.